We're on the topic of a viral videos here. I'm going to show Koa which one of mine went viral. Did you guys know that people just post the same video over and over and over and over and over again on Instagram <laughs> and just wait for one to go viral? It's so strange. <laughs> like <laughs> now I feel old because I'm like, what? I didn't know that was a thing. It's just bizarre. Let's see your the viral video. People are posting less surfing and more walking around on the beach. This yeah. is the viral video. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta play that. <laughs> this is the video <laughs> that like everyone's posting their surf clips, and I'm just posting this one, and I have all the surf clips, all the gnarly fucking ways I post. This is the clip that goes through a million on Instagram. <laughs> Dude, uh, it made my day. I was like, this is what it's about. Dude, my, my viral Instagram clip is like a small chokes wave. It's so weird what hits and what yeah, doesn't. Yeah, it's insane. You know, I think you posted that. The one of you and John right there. Was it kind of around the time when that lady was on the plane screaming, that guy's not real. <laughs> that guy's not real. And everyone's like, okay. aliens are yeah. invading. <laughs> <laughs> no it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> it was uh, before but that video cracked me up that's a good video yeah john's just standing there like what it's just nate <laughs> john's like why am why am i a part of this why am i doing this but okay so we're back we don't know what episode we're on i've given up on trying i think it's 22 or 3 22 or 3 yeah. oh wow Okay, well, 22 or 3, you'll see it in the caption, if anything. Well, our, the in the ca the captions were wrong for a while, too. <laughs> I went and changed them all. <laughs> you guys are better at keeping track of this than us. But yeah, we are, we're finally back. Nate came home um, from his big adventure around the world. Where were you? I, yeah, pretty much wrapping up summer travels. This latest one was... Um, Euro tour, the slab tour in Europe, and went over there and uh, started the trip off with the Big Wave Awards, which was a success, able to get Ride of the Year, Surf of the Year, so it's pretty psyched. Congratulations. Yeah. Very well deserved. I wanted to get one of those for a long time since the XXL days when they were huge, and so I was fired up to do that, and then that kind of just started the trip. Um, we went on to... Score some waves in the Azores, which are these islands mm -hmm. off of Portugal. And I got to go take Kiran, which we were talking. Kiran's our friend who uh, we've just known forever and such a good dude and family man. But he, because he's got four children, he doesn't travel often. <laughs> um, he oh, was in Portugal <laughs> and there was a swell and the Azores are really close to Portugal, just islands off of it. And I was like, dude, let's just go look around on these islands. And he's like, okay, let's go. And we ended up just scoring literally just me and him out. At this slab. The wave looks so sick. It was so sick. Yeah. On this inside ledge, like, well, this thing just almost fell. Um, it's kind of too hard to pile on. It just got bigger. It turned into this, like, I mean, it was like a, a roll-in. Yeah, it was a roll-in slab. It kind of reminded me of, like, how HT's has it, that roll-in totally. into just, like, a perfect barrel. Like, it's good, like... Next thing you know, we're looking around. We both get Rollins into like eight foot barrels. Just me and Kieran. And I was like, "This is the sickest trip ever." There's really no better feeling than There's that. No better feeling when you're when we're losing out, it, I mean, like you're just at some wave with your buddy or a couple buddies, and you're just getting barreled back to back to back, yeah. and no one else around. Nah, it's the dream to. That's like the goal. That's like why you travel to. Surf. Yeah, exactly. That is what you would ideally find on every trip, but it's just comes around rare that it lines up that you're just with a good friend yeah there's no one else around and it's pumping that looks so fun i was trying that whole time you were there i wanted to come over so bad i hit you up so many times and kieran i'm like i'm coming i'm coming on friday every two days yeah. you're like i can come in two days and i'm like <laughs> okay two days later co where are you at i can come in two days i was like what are you doing dude we're getting this the brand off the ground that this is living uh, like merch clothing brand and just I thought it was going to be so easy, and it, it's just clothing, you know, and 
all of a sudden it was just like problem after problem, and like hiccup after hiccup, delay after delay. <laughs> I feel like there's like a lot of bumps, and then once it's going, it's going. Now it's like that it's being sold, and it's like living on its own kind of. Yeah, it's like more automated. It's way better. But it just so happened I missed like that Euro run. Because that Ireland um, swell you got looked crazy. Yeah, so that was literally the Azores happens, dream trip, cool. Had the cave, surfed the cave before that, which the cave is good all the time. It's just you don't want to surf it all the time because it's such a dangerous wave. So we surfed the cave, we surfed the Azores. There was this massive swell off of Europe, like like really big swell. Yeah. And huge storm system coming down from like Greenland, Iceland, and, and just slamming the whole European coast. And everyone was just like, there's all these different funny crews there. Like there's this, because um, there's a lot of like, there's the Nazare scene, right? Is it clicky? It's super clicky kind of, yeah. Because there's like, like this? well, there's like, you I just have Nazareth <laughs> is its own its own world, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And then you have kind of like the HBO crew, right? Oh, and okay. then there, there's like those guys, the HBO crew. And then you have these like other more freestyle guys that are just chasing big waves and they they're not tied to Nazare. But like yeah. most the guys, if Nazare is good, it's this really weird thing. They have they have to be there. Oh. Kind of like us at Pipe. Us at Pipe, but not we put that our pressure on ourselves. Yeah. They have to be there because I think that's how they get paid. Like Whoa. the way they get paid is their sponsors, similar to Homie posting himself over and over again for a viral video. Yeah. The sponsors, all they want is the Nazare clip. And so they have like these guys that surf Nazare and they just I think I'm not sure, but they I think they tell them, you just be there every time Nazare breaks and you're our pro big wave surfer what a like, wild thing to tell someone yeah it's you like, have to surf i don't know that for sure but it just <laughs> seems like that because yeah. they're like hey this pays the check so i'm going to be at Nazare yeah, yeah. if the waves are I, big. I get what you're saying and so um <sighs> that swell Nazare was literally 200 foot but <laughs> straight on shore like so such a, such yeah. a big storm uh that it was just a mess so guys are looking elsewhere like Guys were rushing to Morocco. Guys were looking at um, this other island chain, Madeira. There's a big wave there. Like Twiggy went there, and um, Nick Von Rupp and Tori went there. And then Billy goes to Morocco, like from Oahu. He goes from the Sunset event, flies to Morocco. Yeah. Um, but during all that madness, there was this this sneaky chart, day, like a few days right off the back of those, lining up for... Ireland, um, it wasn't really sneaky. It was just the winds were bad. Yeah. Huge swell, bad winds. And last second, maybe 24 hours out, which is the way with the Atlantic, is like, you can't. I told you, that's why you're like, we're talking swells. And I'm like, three days out, can't predict it. Just like, j- just come over here. You just got to be there. You got to be there. Yeah. Because um, you got to decide where to go like 24 hours out. That Ireland chart switch. And next thing you know, it's just like, Looking 20 foot, sick paddle, perfect clean winds. I'm like, okay, perfect. This is where I'm going. Like, I could care less about some big, like, I don't want the tallest wave ever. That's not my goal. I want the biggest <laughs> yeah. fucking barrel ever. Yeah. <laughs> and seriously. so I'm like, I'm going there. And um, I get there and it was way bigger than forecasted. Way bigger. I thought it was going to be 15 to 20 and it was 30 foot barrels. Like, Crazy. Like big, big open ocean swell hitting a slab. And I'm like, holy smokes, this is nuts. So like, and uh, Chumbo was on my flight and oh. he, he had been in Morocco. And I'm like, <laughs> what? I, like, that's the funniest thing, right? So yeah. no one at this point, no one's talking to each other. Like, no, one, I didn't talk to Chumbo. I talked to him before and he didn't say he was going to Morocco. I didn't say I was going to the Azores. I talked to like Tori and Nick and yeah. like no one really said where anyone was going. All of a sudden, Chumbo's on my flight and I'm like, oh, <laughs> you saw the forecast. <laughs> Fucker. Because he was in Morocco, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, it's like Chumbo's going to be, you know, like he's gnarly. I'm like, this is going to be a session. He's, oh, yeah. He's, he's going to be pushing it when yeah. guys are pushing it. Show up. Um, Chumbo just ended up 
Chumbo just ended up towing the whole day, which I was surprised because he's a badass on the paddle. And yeah. he might have, Mulligmore's a huge left. He might have paddled a like, psycho one. Yeah. Uh, but he was just towing the whole day. And the paddle session went down and it was just crazy, man. Like, first wave, I had this wipe out. I thought I was going to stroll back in, get another huge barrel. First wave just went on this slab and. Bolivar has this like really pinpoint position to take off where it's not a slab. There's like a chip. Some of them chip, some of them don't. Some of them are just mega double ups, but sometimes yeah. they look similar. And so like you can commit to the wrong one for sure. Yeah. Committed to the wrong one, but would have been epic if I had made it. Huge step and just fall, go over the falls. Okay, no worries, not a big deal. Been through big how many big wave wipeouts, all yeah. good. Dude, this thing impacts. And it, it was like <laughs> the the impact felt like I was in what Jack just showed me of a nuclear reactor firing up. Felt like my <laughs> head was in that. Like it did this thing of like it wasn't like I can't. It's hard to explain, but whatever the mass of water I was in was the main violence of that lip landing. <laughs> yeah. And it did this thing of like <laughs> like on my head, and I was like, Fuck. and it dazed me super bad. Like, and I like. I went like oh, oh, like, oh, shoot, like, wait, I'm super fried. What's going on? And then I'm like, oh, I'm getting super smoked. Like, I got to I got a pool because I just went off this ledge underwater. It's going down deep. Fuck, like, you could have been like almost like unconscious. Yeah, nearly like that doesn't happen often to me that, yeah. I, that my head gets rocked. But I like was like close to probably a KO on the impact. Yeah. Just to the violence. And it felt like. Like I was getting pulled, like my skin was getting pulled and my joints were getting pulled and, and not in any specific direction, just all at once everywhere. I was just in this like vortex. Sounds terrible. Yeah, it was, it was scary. <laughs> and then um, I go to pool and I realized my hood, i had had my hood on, but down. Yeah. My hood wasn't on my head anymore. It was gone. And I'm like, what the hell my whole neck? You know, when you put on your suit, you pull it over, but yeah. before you pull it over, your whole neck is exposed. Yeah. And you zip up on your chest. Like, I didn't have that anymore. And I was like, where's my fucking pool? Like, I can't find it. I'm reaching around, looking, and seconds are going by underwater. And I'm dazed. So I'm like, I don't have, how long am I going to look for this? What's happening? Oh, my whole hood had gotten pulled up over my head. And when it had done that, it had taken my pulleys with it and tucked them over here. Oh. And I couldn't get to them because it was like wedged on the side of my head. And I'm like, okay, my hood's off, my pools are gone, and I'm just going down. And I just was realized, like, oh my god, I can't pool because I can't, don't have time anymore to look for this. So I just went to just old school struggle fest. Just, oh, I'm getting up. I don't care anymore. And the weird thing was like, my board, like, um, it didn't feel like it was tombstoning. It felt like it was somewhere next to me, like. You were just in, you know, like, like the you can feel, violence. Yeah, you it. can feel your leash when it's above yeah. you, and you can climb your leash. Yeah. Well, my leash wasn't. My board wasn't above me, and so my board was like down on a level with me. I think so. My leash just felt like it went off in a certain direction, and I'm like, can't climb my leash. It's not. It's not leading to the surface. Swear, fifteen strokes. I think it took me to get to back to the top. Jeez, dude. There was no next wave. If there had been, I would have gone two waves for sure. Fuck, that's... No, that was my first wave of the session. <laughs> I come up and I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like I felt, you know what I felt like uh, sometimes when like a little kid falls and he like looks at the parent to like judge the reaction. Like, am I like smoked or am I not? And the yeah. parent's like, oh no, you're good. That's what this Irish safety dude did. Like, I was like looking at him and he's like, get on. And I'm like, okay, I got on and my hood's like off the side of my head. And I'm like, already like my shoulder, like I tweaked my shoulder. And then he's like looking at me. And then he, I'm like, I got to take a break in the channel, like thinking he's going to just whip me to the channel. He just beelines me straight back to the peak and just th throws the tail out of the ski. And I just go off and he just sits me straight back in the lineup. Because at that point, there was only two of us out paddling. So it was me and this other dude, and I and he just buzzes off, and I'm like, okay, well I guess I'm okay. <laughs> Pull my hood on, <laughs> get my things fixed, like, and um, because there was only two of us out, one other guy was coming out, and it was absolutely pumping. It turned into that situation where uh, there's not enough guys for you to like 
oh, I'm not feeling it right now. Like, yeah, that dude caught a wave. And then I'm the only one sitting there and the next wave comes. And you're like, you have to go. Like, there's no one out there. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm going. Okay, I'm just going to shake this one off. I go. Another big wipeout. Like, make the drop, pull in, foam ball smokes me. And this one, um, I was stuck in the white water and my leash pulled over my head. And so I was stuck in like a super mounting position, moving forward fast underwater. My board pulls over my head and then I'm in a scorpion. Like my, <laughs> dude, my hip flexors get, I don't, they get maxed to their, this is the greatest stretch these hip flexors have ever had. Like my <laughs> leash is pulling my leg so extreme. My heel is by the top of my head and I'm literally in a super mounting scorpion underwater. And I'm like any, my vertebrae are maxed out on my back. Like I can feel my whole posterior chain is maxed in a scorpion. All well, your discs were I just can't not pull anymore. And my board's yanking me like, dude, and I'm trying to tuck and roll. You know, like when it's pulling on you in a scorpion. So you, the board's, pull, your legs are up this way. It's pulling you this way. Yeah. And the resistance is like on your face. And yeah. I'm trying to tuck and roll to uncoil myself, but yeah, it's yeah. not letting me use the pressure. <laughs> no, getting, it's like you're being put, yeah, you're fully being scorpion. Yeah. You got this big ass board pulling Yeah, you exactly. That way. And um, at this point, my brain is starting to just have a meltdown. Like, like this is the worst case scenario. I'm getting so fucking annihilated again yeah. after this last wipeout. I come up and the same homie's there on his ski. And he's like, get on. And I'm like all out of it. And I just look at him like, third time's a charm. And he's like, yeah. He whips me back to the lineup, pop off the ski. Five minutes later... Another wave comes, and then that was the one I did the huge foam climb. Yeah, and got worked again. Three wipe, three waves, three wipeouts, three beatdowns. The third one was not that bad, but by the third one, I had lost all my confidence <laughs> in <laughs> yeah, myself. You're just I was like, like I what can't, is wrong with yeah, me? I was like, I can't pick him. It's not my day. Homie grabs me again, zips me back to the lineup, and I'm like, oh no, like. God, I'm just, I want to go in now. I don't have the willpower anymore. Like, yeah, I just don't even want to be out here. And then as he tosses me in the, ch in the channel, I tell him, man, I'm getting so smoked. Like, <laughs> the keeper, and he just goes, go harder. <laughs> just some guy, you're like, he's now your like leader. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> he's like dad. I'm like, uh, what do I do? He's like, go harder. I'm like, oh no. I'm going to die out here. And then I sat for two hours, didn't get a wave. And then I got the, my best wave of my session. So and I ended up working out, but it was yeah. just like emotional roller coaster. Any wave you go on out there is like high intensity, whether you're falling or making it. So like the barrel, like wasn't the barrel of my life, but I got like a nug and I was like, it felt like it wasn't the wave necessarily, but like. I felt the same hype as if I had ridden something in absolutely incredible. Yeah. Just hyped and relieved that I didn't fall again. Like yeah. Just the relief of not doing another beat down. I know exactly what you're, what like that feeling is. Yeah. You're like, I don't like you're borderline about to claim a wave that you like, you yes. know, you wouldn't claim, but totally everything that day, like, or like whatever travel, like led up like yeah. the beat downs and you finally just get like, a barrel yeah you're just like <laughs> yeah. i've won and kicked out the won. channel i'm like, you're just like, you're like yes yeah that's what i did i threw my head over i was just like yes. <laughs> no beat down again like that's a funny feeling dude yeah it was a it was a crazy session like crazy to be a part of it because i just saw waves out there that were like that were could have been like you know any anything comparable to chopes on a big toe day or a thundercloud when it's doing it like yeah uh you know when it's that hit starts to hit that 25 foot size where yeah, it just yeah, turns uh, into a massive. different monster like that day i saw waves like that of that caliber where really? that i'm like this is like this is one of the best big waves in the world for sure like yeah obviously it doesn't it's so rare that it's clean a lot of times it has like big stormy chandeliers on it which makes it Maybe not the best at times because you want like you know cloud break. You know it's gonna do yeah that yeah. thing, 
Mullimore is less predictable, but when those right ones come, I'm just like, this is crazy. It's just like, I don't know. Yeah, it looks crazy. I was, I've been wanting to go there forever. And I thought when you were there, like, I was like, this is it. This is my time. I'm going to make it. I fully thought you were coming. I wanted to so bad. I just. Whatever. Things get in the way. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason. I was talking to Tom Lowe, who was on the fence. And he's like one of the guys that pioneered a lot of the big paddle ones out there. And, um. He was on the fence because of the wind, and he was in New Zealand, and he ended up like he he has the wave dialed right, like yeah, he's there for the big swell. That's his baby. That wave, like that's where he his whole mission is yeah. based in getting the greatest ride of his life is going to be there, and it has been there, and he's had the beatdowns there. Like, yeah, you know, sometimes some guys just connect with waves. That's his like his zone, and dude, that for that forecast was impossible to predict. Like, but he didn't end up coming, and he was just had that. He just oh, called God. me and he was just like, I am fucking so rattled. Like, I'm so bummed. Because the wind switched last second just straight offshore. Yeah. And he was just like. That's I, terrible. But he, he it just came down to like where you have to convince yourself sometimes when you miss those. Like, oh, that was just meant to be. Yeah. Like, you have to tell yourself that mentally or you're going to just like go insane. You got it. <laughs> Even if it wasn't meant to be, it totally. is meant to be. It is. <laughs> Everything There's a reason. For, There's, a There's reason. always a we'll reason. Know. Yeah, exactly. I think back to what you were talking about just now about how um, your like, vest got pulled over and you couldn't pull your stuff. Yeah. I think that's a super good example for people who like just get these like safety equipment and just go and surf big waves. Yeah. Like you still have to be prepared to survive these waves without yeah. it because mm-hmm. that's like a prime example like you survive that because of your abilities yeah you know totally like if you were just some random person it's like oh i'm gonna go do this because i got this pull vest and all of a sudden you can't pull it yeah you know you have to be like you, you have, have to, to have gone down gone through those beat downs pre-vest yeah you know like we we were surfing big ways in trunks first yeah and we were on like obviously the older guys were doing that way before us but when we were growing up and just starting we were just in board shorts then we were in our uh wakeboard vest and so we went down we went yeah, the through the vest. stages yeah. of the beat downs in just trunks and to just a single impact suit where you're probably gonna pop up hopefully gonna pop up if you're unconscious to where like now these pool vests are, but that's the thing. You got to be definitely prepared to one, take a fucking hit, like take a hard hit and yeah. still be thinking logically underwater, like through the haze yeah. instead of like, I can't find it. Panic. Yeah. I'm done. Or yeah. like, you're like, no, no. Okay. Resort. I'm swimming to the surface. Oh, can I climb my leash? No, it's next to me. Yeah. <laughs> Plan C. Here we go. <laughs> Final option. Swim. Final to option. The top. <laughs> Let's make a deal. It's crazy, dude. There's there's not there's not many like feelings that compare to like just a massive wave hitting you. No. Nah. And especially when they hit you, like how you're talking about, like you were in the right place at the right time to be in the worst spot. Yeah. Like that is that feeling is so crazy. I think about it all the time, like the human body is so durable. So durable. Like it can, we can handle like a lot. Yeah. Realistically. I think cause, like, but you can make it more durable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, that, all we do is train and surf. Yeah. To yeah. make our body strong and like be able to handle situations like that. You yeah, know? definitely. Because obviously if you don't train, you're going to get hurt. Yep. I feel like if you're not strong enough to be able to do that, but... It is, it is really crazy, that feeling. And then oftentimes, you, that's the highest you get on uh, adrenaline. Yeah, fight you're, for your life. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> you're like, <laughs> whoo, got that hit. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, Again. Even when sometimes you make them, you're like, not, you don't get that high. Like, it only yeah. comes down to that when all of a sudden you realize, like, oh, it might be life or, life or death here. Yeah. And then you get that big dose. Cause like I got pretty smoked, injured on that wave, like my or just it's not in an actual injury, but my shoulder was just like I could feel it just impingement got crunched, my ribs, my neck, and I for one second, and then it was just gone. Just felt that like flow of heat, 
Yeah. And I'm like, oh, adrenaline. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> it's hard to find now, that adrenaline. Yeah, it is. So it Just completely fried our adrenal glands. Yeah. The next day, I was like, I felt all that pain again. Like, felt like, like, like I couldn't swallow, like, gulp water without pain in my entire oh neck. Oh, my God. I've had that before. And I was just like, this is bad for the body. But so bad. if your muscles aren't sore... Uh, after that, then you've probably blown out your ligaments and bones. That's yeah. what I always think. Like, I'm glad my muscle my, is sore because if you don't have any um, of that, like, kind of structural tissue built up, I think that's when, like, you see some of these guys are just, I mean, it's all like a lot of it's based off luck and whatever you're gambling. But, like, a lot of these guys, they get injured every time and they're injured so often. And I think, like, jumping around on the Bosu balls isn't cutting it. That's not strengthening yeah. your structural tissue. I think you put like, we've been, we were like 18 in your dad's gym lifting. Like yeah. we were doing GHG sit-ups, GHG back extensions. We were lifting, benching, deadlifting. Yeah. Like that's like, if you think back, like that's 10 years of lifting weights before yeah. lifting weights was a thing in surfing. Like it has an effect on your structural tissues. I think ligaments get stronger, bones get denser. Yeah, The tissues, the connective tissues are like, much more durable than there was like a lot of guys that scoffed at doing that. Yeah. And then they're just popping and snapping when, when you get put into those high pressure wipeouts. Yeah. I think, I think picking up weight and lifting weights is huge, huge to keep your body like in shape. Like I get the cardio or whatever, like movement stuff, but you have to carve out time to pick up weight Yeah, and get your muscles strong. Like even if like, uh, my goal isn't to get like bigger at the moment, but like just to the muscles I have, I want them very strong, super strong. So you take a hit. Yeah. Mainly for that reason, because if they're not, you're going to be fucked. Like say your neck wasn't as strong as it is. You're, you were fucked. You oh, broke yeah. it. Fully. Yeah. Fully. That workout we did the other day, I don't think was too healthy <laughs> for the body. Speaking of, <laughs> Nate, Nate decided to put us through <laughs> 10 years of training we haven't learned. <laughs> 10 years of training led us to this moment. <laughs> a 32-minute workout that nearly... I felt concussed after. <laughs> I couldn't think. That's what I'm saying. It's all about that impact training. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Train your mind for those big hits. That was bad, though. Yeah, just come... That's not good. I can barely walk. Yeah, we did three... <laughs> We did three workouts and we just made them one. And it yeah, was just <laughs> true. So it bad. truly could have been three workouts over three days, one each day. Yeah, it, it was. It was them. three combined workouts. And now we're smoked. And you added a hangover on top of it. Yeah, I'm super hungover right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was doing so good. I didn't drink for like three weeks. I was like, I'm not drinking and getting ready for winter. <laughs> Start a business and uh, and now I'm here. That's uh, what happens when the waves go flat. Yeah, but speaking of, we got tons of swell on the way. That's we part of why Co of was gonna come to um, Europe, and the Europe tour would have continued. But last second, I heard that you guys, are, you and Jack, were gonna get on a flight. Like it was like twelve hours away from your flight. Morning here, night there. I was yeah. like, dude, look at the forecast. Pipe, maybe Jaws. Yeah. No, I'm glad we stayed here because my plan would have been just to fly there, meet you in the airport. Yeah, meet fly the, back with you. Fly with me. Let's sit together. <laughs> yeah, that'd be sick. Just put me in the back of the plane. I just want to get on a plane and go on a surf trip, it minus the surfing. It would have been like four overnight flights in two days <laughs> somehow. That's if good you for can your imagine body. that, like that route. That's good for your body. I mean, I swear, like we were just looking at each other's head the other day and like little gray hair is starting to pop up oh don't talk about and i'm this. like, Fuck. like <laughs> i know the stress of just i think i think like the planes and their radiation level and like that kind of stuff is super bad for the body like it dyes your hair gray <laughs> <laughs> the flare planes are dying your hair gray and the water yeah. is turning the frogs <laughs> Your hair is gay. <laughs> no, we're not getting any younger. I'm about to be... I'm turning 30 in a month. That's crazy. 30 years old. Ko and I both turned 30 this year. Ko is like six or seven months 
six you year June than higher, right? older yeah. than me yeah yeah it's I'm heavy. December or June 20s are gone they're behind us like that era is gone it's heavy it's crazy but pipe is always there for us pipes waiting for look us at, every winter <laughs> look at Jamie oh my god <laughs> he's still going harder than ever I know he's freakazoid he loves it that's that's one thing that gives me hope is like watching Uncle D and like yeah all those guys they surf he was surfing pipe every day and he was like in his sixties so crazy and like not just like going out there but like getting nuts ones getting barreled on bombs getting crazy ones like the what was that edit John put out and Uncle D has the closing Form. clip form. Yeah, that, if you guys haven't seen that, you guys got to check it That's out. That's one but. of the best surf clips of Pipe, I think, or just in general. Yeah, it's so it's made. dedicated to Pipe. Yeah, and then it closes with Uncle D getting this wave, which is like recent, like just before he died that that season. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like it's so late, technical, like at his age doing that on a drop like that on a wave like that, like it just shows what you could do and when. You have that many years of instinct and trained ability and like waves of consequence. Yeah. Like it doesn't really matter. Like well, one, those guys were like built different. Yeah. Like <laughs> they're actually like they're a different the breed. Old but, blood. but um we're just talking about that. Yeah. Literally. Uh but it's crazy just to see like he was moving like a twenty year old. Which like he might not all the time, but all of a sudden when it matters most on the face of a 10 foot pipe slab with backwash he looks like as good as any 20 year old would on that yeah crazy and uncle mike uncle remember mike. his back door wave i think it was last year <laughs> I, was, I was we were both out that session i was watching him go i was like holy shit insane it was like a uncle mike is how old is uncle mike is he 65 i don't want to mess that yeah. age up but i think around there 60 65 anyway he's he's not young anymore i just watched him go on like a back door wave but not just a back door wave it was like an eight foot like slab like back door wave i was like oh my god uncle mike don't do it and he just made it perfectly doubted his ability i i unfortunately i doubted it for a second but i was like he came out i was just like i yeah he's the fucking man the man bro i felt bad for doubting he just proved a lot of people wrong. Yes. And definitely. it gives us a lot of hope too. Because yeah. if we just stay in shape and maybe stop drinking and partying, <laughs> then we could be serving pipe in our sixties too. Which we're halfway to sixty. Hopefully by then it's by choice. Like we don't have to be grinding for a career. Yeah, Hopefully yeah. By then we're yeah. retired. We're not putting out YouTube videos every week. <laughs> Six years old on the beach at pipe. Talking to Jack. <laughs> Jack, catch me coming out of the water. <laughs> Post this clip on Instagram 30 more times. <laughs> yeah, we'll be like too late to the trend. Yeah. Like, you know, like the old anymore. guy all of a sudden tries, but it's too late yeah. and it doesn't like. We like no hated it at first and then we're like, oh, we got to do it now. <laughs> we got to try. But like, no, no one's doing that anymore. Too late, man. They're TikTok dancing on the beach. <laughs> oh, just kill me. If you ever see that happen, <laughs> it's over at that point. <laughs> the retirement. It's pretty funny what TikTok and like, I guess social media has done to like the newer generation. Yeah. In the surf world too, yeah. it's it's reached everywhere. Yeah. Because I look at it, I guess from just like, I don't know, maybe I just don't like it or something. But I'm just like, oh, like, why are you doing that? You know, like. Yeah, it will be somewhere and someone will just be like doing a TikTok dance like anywhere. But it happens a lot on the beach. Yeah. It's like, definitely. oh, it's so cringy. But like, is that what people were thinking when like we're starting YouTube videos and stuff? Like, I think definitely like there was, that, there was definitely that like stigmatism when we were like beginning to push into that. But I mean, at least we were like really basing it off of surfing yeah it's true like everything was based yeah, off oh, of here's our day we're gonna show you getting ready and we're gonna show you what happens after but there's a surf session or like true it's about surfing whereas like 
then the the newer stuff really seems to be turning about like hey look at me it's just views and you don't even see a surf clip yeah. i see some of these guys post these things like they're like jumping on jet skis we're going out and then the clip ends i'm like oh i'm gonna see a wave here the guy's yeah. fucking geared up he's got his tow board and his jet ski and he's i mean he's gonna ride something gnarly and then the clip ends yeah. I'm like, it's like 10 seconds. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what was that? Oh, he's like, follow. He's, he's stretching out, warming up. Here he goes. Yeah. Here he goes. Oh, it's over. <laughs> Wait, what? Did you even go out there? Like, what happened? Yeah. I feel like it's very, like, not um, passion driven anymore. Yeah. Like, we, I guess, started our, like, social media careers or whatever based on this goal of just, like, surfing slabs yeah. and getting barreled. Like, before we were doing it, you know, but. Now I'll even find myself just like, okay, what's going to get the most views? Mm -hmm. Whereas like, what's going to make, what am I super passionate about making? Like, and vice versa, like what's going to get the most views? So I feel like all the kids now, like out here are just doing stuff to try to get views and it's not exactly what they're passionate about. And it yeah, comes off no, like- that's super true. It comes off as bad- content to mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. but i don't know maybe i'm biased like that's what people are probably thinking about us too so it's yeah. a weird it's a weird thing it's a weird time it's a weird time in serving like look at what's just happening with all the brands and and guys are just getting cut left and right and guys are wondering wow what is it that i needed to do to have not gotten cut and it's too little too late and it's yeah brands picked up too many guys for the wrong reasons and it just strayed into this bizarre like time where like teams were diluted with too many people and the brands yeah. didn't look at hey who is this guy that is going above and beyond doing the most let's channel energy into him it was like let's just get like 25 more guys on yeah and then what happens you get this team where 50% are guys you picked up that are super complacent and are not going to grind for you like yeah. the other 50%. And then you just bogged out all your budget. And now you're telling the guy that worked twice as hard, there's, there's no, no more budget yeah. for him. And he's like, okay, well, that sucks. Like, yeah. I just <laughs> like you did all the your best budget I could. on stuff that didn't sell product. And yes. now you have no more budget. Yes. So it's mainly just the guys that were in charge of making these decisions just mm -hmm. made terrible decisions. But it is, surfing is in that, it's, it's in a transitioning period right yeah. now. It's like everything's been handed o over to like corporations. Yeah. And they're not stupid. They look at numbers and they know what to do. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you're on the bad side of it, like, you're on the bad side of it. Yep. You know, sometimes it's based on nothing but numbers. Yep. Like if they need budget here, they're like, that's their cut. Mm -hmm. But the surf world is very sensitive. And it's not like other, um, I guess, sports or yeah. something else. Like the core audience is very, very sensitive to what brands do. And they could be shooting themselves in the foot, like letting a lot of people go and stuff but we'll just have to wait and see yeah and i think it's cyclical too like it's like cyclical cyclical it's a big it's a big word that's a big word for we're me. just gonna roll it. <laughs> <laughs> I might need a, uh, can you use it in a sentence <laughs> <laughs> well i'm about to explain it okay so in the beginning of like the andy era andy irons and all that whole crew it was like Remember what the brands that sponsored the main events? Like the Gotcha Pro, the yeah. OP Pro. Like they had Pipe, they had Chopes. They were like the big brands sponsoring events. Yeah. Where did those brands go? Did they get bought? Did they get diluted? Did they get corporatized? All of a sudden you have Quick, Billabong, Rip Curl, like these upstart Ruka, these brands all of a sudden you see them taking over every event on the tour leg. Like they're sponsoring yeah. these events. Boom, 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 boom. And then all of a sudden that big cycle starts to begin again. Yeah. Brands get corporatized, brands get bought out, names get licensed. And then it's like the door opens for a whole new host of brands or whoever those are going to be, which at the time seems small, but have the potential to be huge. Like, yeah. 
it's just that that end of that hamster wheel just goes and goes and goes. It just sucks if you're the surfer that didn't kind of uh, put them rise to the cream of the crop, didn't get to the top. Yeah, and um, you're now scratching and have no safety net. No safety net, scratching no for a contract, didn't put the money you made where it should have gone. And you are looking for a contract in a time where there probably isn't going to be any. But I guess that yeah. will, it's the same thing with the brands. A lot of guys get cut and new groms come up and the guys that made the right decisions, played their cards right, continue and have the longer careers. Yeah, it's true. It's a wild world. It's definitely like an Spe- interesting time. I, I mean, I'm always curious, like what the surf fans are like from their setback view. Like these guys are working normal jobs, and they're but they're watching these sponsorship transactions happen because it's so um, uh, transparent now. With like, like us talking about now, or Stab yeah, putting out yeah. their article, like here's who's cut and here's who's not. You know, like they yeah. literally put articles out like that, and so like you now get this crazy view of like. Not just surfing, not just the contest, but like what the brands are doing and who, what athletes made the cut or didn't make the cut. Yeah. It's like this crazy time of everything's out there in the open. Everything is public. Yes. What about, um, I forgot to ask you this about the XXL, but there was no prize money this year, huh? There was no prize money. That's such a bummer. It is a bummer. Because you won two awards. Yeah, because I won two awards and it sucks. But, like, next year, if there's prize money and someone happens to win it, I'm going to be like, hmm, <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> but at the same time, there was no awards at all. Yeah. And I love money, but <laughs> I also, like, have dreamed of winning Ride of the Year yeah. or Surfer of the Year for a very long time. And so, on one hand, it's like, damn, that sucks I didn't get a paycheck. But on the other hand, like I can utilize the ride of the year and the surfer of the year accomplishments, one for my personal goals, but also to my sponsors. Yeah. I'm not going to let that fly, like be like, oh, yeah, okay, it's just water on the ride. Like, no, 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 no. I now have these titles and I've proven that I can be that guy. And I've proven that in a year I could be the best or try to be the best out of a whole category of big wave surfing. Yeah. And I can leverage that now with brands. And if yeah, that's the way I think, right? Like that might not be a big check in the form of a big check on a stage, but that can be money on the back end when yeah. I go to talk to brands and do oh, that. Oh yeah. No, you're like, you have, if you're going to talk to a brand, I think you're pretty well off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but like everyone I, knows, even without that title, like you're the guy. <laughs> Thanks, but um, at least my friend Koa thinks so. Yeah. Are you want a sponsor? <laughs> yeah. uh, this is a great brand here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll pay you in t-shirts. <laughs> I'll pay you to get those t-shirts, <laughs> dude. What about this WSL um fucking Jaws event contract? Yeah, it's gnarly. They sent us a. Should we even talk about this? I don't know. We may need to read the. Contract has a <laughs> confidentiality clause. I have not <laughs> signed this contract yet. Yeah, there's, maybe there's we just a lot of like gnarly. Con- they pretty much own you. Yeah, it's gnarly. The contract is definitely super gnarly. Um, we'll have to check that out and maybe make it. You see the thing Kiala put out, Kenley? Yes, I did. It's pretty heavy. Yeah, that was a bummer too. It's just like it just goes back to that whole thing. You know, it's a big weird time, and in the big wave arena, it's even weirder because. For three years, we didn't compete at Jaws. Um, they took the Big Wave Tour away. They stripped the what were the XXL awards. Thankfully, they're back now and not under the control of um, a media platform that has other agendas. That was one other thing, too. Like, While the money is cool, when there is no money, you also don't have a brand coming in and saying, hey, we're paying, the, we're paying this prize purse. And yeah. we want a guy to win every year for the next four years. Or like, you know, like, yeah, it starts to be like if a sponsor pays big money for a prize purse, then maybe they want their athlete 
and they push it a little bit in that direction. Yeah. So there is some true. weird shit like that that can I feel like down. the XXL was kind of like that <laughs> a lot of times. I mean, back in the day, there was a few awards where you're like, really? Ah, uh, did that like? There were some blatant uh, ones. I can't remember yeah. off the top of my head, but it was like that was not. And like, and the great. main pre- presenting sponsor. Yeah. Has their main guy all of a sudden winning, and then unless it's a really clear where everyone's like. That guy won 100%. Like, we yeah. can see it, and he wins. When it gets close, it's only when it gets close is when those decisions can get swayed by the corporate sponsor underneath. Yeah. It has to be close. It has to be to close, it. or they can't do it. But, like, yeah. sometimes it's, like, not quite close enough, and everyone's like, whoa. <laughs> Wait <laughs> yeah. a second. <laughs> like, uh, that's pretty awkward. Yeah. But, yeah, that's it's uh, going back to... Um, the Jaws event and all the events of that nature. It's just strange. Like the WSL put all their chips into one basket and that's world records. And Keala made a great point and it's a point we've talked about and it's, hey, uh, what's an award we can have where we can capitalize on media every single year, but we don't have to pay every single year. Oh, yeah. that's a world record. That comes once in a decade. And wait, who measures it? We do. So we <laughs> decide who gets it and how it's measured, and we don't publish how it's measured, but we call it the team of science. And with the last three years, a lot of things have been done in the name of science that have been pretty suspect. And so it just starts to get interesting. It starts to be too many coincidences, but who knows what's really going on behind the scenes. But they put everything into their world record awards, which is just... Here's 500 grand to the winner of the world record and or a budget of 500 grand more than any big wave tour event ever had like and it's just like oh it's damn like, where was all that money when guys were like putting it on putting their lives on the line every event every week every time like every swell like now it's all based off if you want a world record it's going to be probably at Nazare and they will capitalize on that because every entry, um, every news article, right? When the world record happens, it becomes global news. Yeah. And so a platform like WCL sees that and says, hey, we want to be like the person who decides this awards because that way we can um, have the control when everything hits the news and the media and it all flows back to us. Yeah. But I mean, smart on their end. I guess so. Yeah, I was just thinking. Just that. not so good for the surfers, but as a big platform, media platform, super smart. Yeah. Just Should not be. so good for the big wave guys who, if we wanted a tour, or them. I don't even know if I'm a big wave guy anymore. I haven't surfed a big wave since like <laughs> <laughs> so long. <laughs> it's been a while for you. I know. I'm like, I'm like, when was the last time? I think it was the Eddie, huh? The Eddie. Wow. That's, I haven't touched uh, my big boards. Dude, it's almost January again. That was like a year ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. That's not really. If I go a year without surfing a big wave, I think I can't even call myself. <laughs> you have to like uh, requalify. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you a thing or two. <laughs> I don't want to see going and I'll show you mindset <laughs> on a big wave. I've seen it before. It's coming. <laughs> it's making a return. I just got over surfing Jaws. I just wanted to stay here off yeah. after like so many years of just getting lipped in the head and then all those people out there. Yeah. Jaws is just, I don't know. Like I, I feel a similar way to having traveled to all the waves I traveled and I'm just like, I don't want to say there's better waves out there, but there is waves on par that are more exciting because it's not the same thing every time. And, I've had the same experience. Jaws, just so many wipeouts. And it's not like sometimes these waves get these like, oh, because that's because it's the gnarliest. Like, it's not. It's not because it's gnarliest. It is on par. There's dangerous waves in the world. And a lot of them, people are like, but what's the most dangerous? It's like a lot of these waves have all equal power when they hit that 25, 30 foot range. What's different is how hard are they to ride? Yeah. They're all, I just, put out two videos now on like dangerous waves because it's it's been like people were asking for it for a long time and when i actually sat down t- 
to like think of what I was going to say and what waves I was going to use, I was like, it's really tough to say what waves the da- most dangerous. Especially when you haven't surfed them in a year. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them I haven't even surfed. <laughs> but I went with <laughs> the, <laughs> the most dangerous wave in the world was pipe. Uh, based off numbers and deaths, yeah. 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 But I see that gets mass confused because the deadliest wave in the world is probably pipe. And because of that, do this I like maybe the most dangerous because of the amount of people surfing it. But there are waves I think that are more dangerous and a higher chance of injury, but way less people surfing yeah. them. Yeah. So I'll see like my Mulligmore video was just up and guys are like, Oh, like what's Mulligmore compared to like pipe? And I'm like, you have, like, look at these waves. You cannot compare <laughs> yeah. them. Like, this is 30 foot pipe on a yeah. slab. Like, this is way heavier, way heavier. Yeah. Pipe has had more deaths because thousands of people surf pipe over the course of a winter and periods. But, like, yeah, there's like 20 guys surfing Mulligmore over a winter. Like, it's just, or these other slabs, like, Chopes is now getting to that level where there's so many people surfing it and you start to see the injuries rise. Yeah. Uh, it's people per session and you'll see injuries going up. But like, yeah, I don't know. <sighs> That's a big rant. <laughs> Jack, you okay over there? <laughs> <laughs> Jack's like, water. <laughs> I wish I had a video of Jack right now. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing that. This whole podcast. Okay. Like getting lost. Yeah. We're fried. Okay, we're at 51 minutes, so we're going to wrap it up. Yeah, we're going to wrap it up here. Before we get ourselves in trouble. Take a nap. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Okay, welcome back. And I hope you guys enjoyed another podcast. And uh, pretty much back for... That was like a lot of traveling. We did a lot of traveling this summer, so we were like kind of sporadic with these, but um, we are now heading into Hawaii winter. And this is the first winter... Since having the podcast. Oh, yeah. You know, so like is. We, we started at summertime. Yeah. Um, and uh, what was that, six months ago, four, five months ago? I don't know. I don't but know. Um, yeah, this will be the first winter being home and uh, being able to do these a lot more consistently, consistently and also just having to, having being able to give you guys like, um, you know, it's always easier to explain things, talk about things when it's fresh happened. And so that's what's fun, like with this, and we haven't had been able to do one of these during winter. Yeah. And just like, there's so much funny stuff that goes down during the winters here that are just such good topics of conversation. Just the inner pipe dramas, the hierarchies yeah. of pipe, the who's coming up, the who took over, took so and so's spot, and priority battles, and the lineup. Mm-hmm. You could talk about the pipe lineup alone after every show for a very long <laughs> yeah. time. <laughs> It's uh, stay tuned. It's a nightmare. Yeah, and literally. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.